Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. Today we're going to be talking about aphids, a very destructive little pest. Now, oftentimes they won't kill a plant, but they can stun its growth. As you can see here, these little black bugs here are aphids. You can see there's some smaller ones and bigger ones. They tend to hang out near the growing shoots of plants and trees. Now, some aphids, they like uh, the broccoli family, you know, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, that sort of thing. Other aphids, they might prefer trees. You don't really need to identify the specific species, but identify the types of plants that they're on. You may have to rotate those crops out. As you can see, a ladybug here, it's one of the natural predators of uh, aphids. Now, uh, aphids, when they get to their adult stage, they will fly away and try and find another spot. Not to lay their eggs, necessarily. They actually give birth to live young, live nymphs. They reproduce asexually. And in one of the articles we'll go to, it actually says one aphid can produce 600 billion offspring in a single season. Here's another picture of a infestation of aphids under a leaf. This is a good picture. Well, this is a picture of damage. Oftentimes you'll see curling leaves, especially near the growing tips and growing shoots. And you'll have to look under the leaf sometimes to see the aphids. They come in several different colors and uh, varieties and sizes. This is an ant who actually feeds off the sweet nectar that these aphids produce because the way they work is they attach to the plant and they just suck the juices out of the plant. They don't really move hardly at all. So if you're out in your field and you see some ants crawling up plants, try and follow them a little bit. Make sure they're not farming a, a herd of aphids. And they really love it on fruit trees too. I remember a cherry tree at an old farm site I had that I just couldn't get those aphids off. The ants just kept bringing them back on. A little diatomaceous earth kind of worked around there, the base a little bit to keep the ants away, but as soon as it got wet, it was practically useless. So biological aphid control, ladybugs. There's also uh, predatory or parasitic uh, aphid uh, control. We'll get to that page in a moment. But their organic aphid spray is interesting. They got some tomato leaves and jalapenos and just water. They also talk about tomato leaves and garlic in another page. And uh, we pretty much covered this page. As you can see, it stunted these corn plants. There's some plants that they just hate, though. And the ones that repel them, garlic, chives, and leeks, the alumum family, allium family, I'm mispronouncing it, I'm sure. Marigolds also help keep it away. Catnip can keep it away, and you might want to attract some cats to your farm anyway, because those will keep the mice and the rats away. Also, fennel, dill, cilantro, pretty much smelly herbs, that sort of thing. And then they talk about trap plants, plants that you might grow at the far side of your garden, the far side of your property, to trap the aphids there. Nastriums and sunflowers, although some other sites say nastriums are good at controlling aphids. I think this might be a nastrium flower. I'm not good with my flower ID, though. If someone does know the answer, leave it in the comments below, please. All right, family food garden. I will be linking to all these pages in the description. This has uh, some pretty good information here. And uh, this was the one that talked about the garlic-based uh, ladybug or uh, spray. And they also talk give some good tips on how to attract ladybugs. They like the frilly leaves of plants like dill, carrot, celery, parsley, fennel, and wild carrot. So you want to have pretty dense foliage, but not too dense. It has to have a lot of area for the ladybugs to nest and to feed on, well, aphids and other types of insects. And they also talk down here, companion planting, growing like nastrium. So this site says nastriums are good to repel the aphids. Other sites say it's a trap plant. You may want to uh, see what kind of aphids are attracted to what kind of plants in your area and reproduce those plants at the far side and use those as trap plants. But sunflowers are typically a good trap plant because they're strong and they can handle an infestation. All right, this is the aphid life cycle. I won't be going too much into this. Just uh, remember, they give live birth to their young. They reproduce asexually. So they're very, very hard plant uh, pests to control. But here is a good one, the aphelionous parasites, aphidius and aphelionous, again, I'm mispronouncing these terribly, but basically they lay up to two to three hundred eggs in an aphid and then just start spreading everywhere. They naturally love to get rid of aphids. Now trying to create a uh, steady population of predatory or parasitic insects can be tough, so you may have to study the individual insects you want to introduce to see how you can properly handle them and create a good environment for them. If you'd like to read more about this, 
Of course, check the links in the description. And if you'd like to see more news headlines like this, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.